Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Good afternoon. Today is the 30th of November. This is a uh, slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 NEC Classic Motor Show, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, part 21. I do apologise if I fall over, if I get things wrong, um, if I crash into a stand or something like that. Um, that's just the way it goes on this channel, I'm afraid. So 1969-70 Triumph uh, 2000 South African maze, probably a 69 actually, because by 1970 the Innsbruck face have to come in, and we'll take a look at one of those in a moment. But this car was imported in 2017, probably some differences in this one between this and uh, the British market ones. Rear seat belts are a very good idea. Yeah, face lift ones are different sort of overriders from the pre face lift ones, but um, there was an even more popular face lift in late 1969 with the uh, instrument facelift. This is a 2.5 PI, um, a 1972 model, and it is 50 years of the 2.5 PI, actually. Um, actually, if you know it's, it's not 68, no, I was wrong about that. You can tell I've been doing this for far too long, can't you, viewers? Far too long, I've been filming uh, 21 parts over the course of three days. Uh, so I shall continue and try not to make any more mistakes but I will never be fail anyway. Uh, I think this is probably a dollar mark, isn't it? 73, 70, no, 74, 75 actually on an N. Uh, I think this be probably a Sprint motor. Yeah, it would be a Sprint. And here, in fact, here is another Sprint, um, actually with Triumph Works livery on it. 73, 74. some extraordinarily large tyres on it, but yes, there we go, those are the correct wheels for a Sprint. Triumph Toledo, parents had one of these back in the day. I never saw it because uh, the thing was so unreliable, they sold, sold it by 1980. Toledo. This one is a, I think this is a 71 or something, yeah, 71, there we go. It's a very the stripped out version of the uh, Dolomite really, although it came out first, before the Dolomite came out. It was in production at the same time as the 1500, not the TC, just 1500. And then later the Dolomite 1850 and the Sprint. This is actually a 1300, this is the first model, it's front wheel drive, but later cars like the Toledo, Dolomite, 500 TC, they were actually all rear wheel drive. Um, I think it was dad engineering cost. Quite a late one for one of these, uh, 69 to 70. I'm sure if you want to find out more information about 1300s, you can just watch the iDrive Classic channel because she has one of those. And the Rover 200 BRM club here, where someone's actually shown very nicely, but we've got red seat belts and red leather interior and aluminium gear knob and a different steering wheel and all kinds of things like that. Uh, this is an early one, they came out in 1998. But the last ones were sold in the year 2000, after the 25 actually got into production. They were quite expensive, actually, these cars. They weren't cheap. I think that was one of the problems, that they um, was just a bit more than their 200 VI, or 25 DTI, actually. They were sold against for a little while. But, yeah, it's a 99-2000, 99-2000, um, with the uh, distinctive air intake as well. So uh, we've got some Tomcats here, the uh, Rover Coupe Owners Club. I've driven two of these actually, viewers. I've drove uh, one that belonged to Mr. Richardson, viewers driving, which is this colour. Um, it also has a little grill on it. Let's just have a look at the interior and see uh, if we can identify the year a bit more. Yeah, this has still got the early steering wheel on it, so it'll be about the same time as uh, it's here. It's a little bit later, actually, it's a 216, it's on a 220. Um, that's a 94, just before we put the airbags in them. It's one of the sort of uh, record-breaking replicas or something. Yes. 
then you know, in 92 they broke some records with these. There's none of the um, later Dash ones here actually, they're all of the early Dash ones here today. This looks suspiciously like a turbo one, actually. <coughs> suspiciously like one. It's a turbo, yeah, 93, 94. 95 red, I think that colour is. Here we go, 200 VI in white, five door. Like we've seen this before, haven't we, viewers? Uh, 1998, 1999. It's 97. It's registered in 98 then. Ooh, 420 GSI. Ooh, we like this. It's from the old Rouse Garage in Charles Hall, but it's about two miles from actually where I live. Um, so this will be again around the same time, yeah, 1997. Extraordinary condition. It's amazing, I mean, my GSI, you didn't actually get sort of nice coloured door handles until the 45. So on the HHR 400s like this, uh, you've still got the uh, black door handles. Let's have a look at some Triumphs now. Uh, Triumph. The Tess. That's just on the uh, changeover year for the two litres. So it's actually a 1.6, that one. Yeah, so 66. Um, got an earlier Vitesse here. That's a pre suffix plate. So somewhere between, I think, 62 is when they came in and 64. Yeah, but the number 63 one suggests it's probably 62 or 63 car. Vitesse 6, yeah, an early one. Then we have a Triumph Courier. Which is the uh, band version of the Herald. I don't know what engine this is. There we go. Gosh, we'd like to have seen one of these is very, very slim these days indeed. Very, very slim. So we've got a, a Dolomite here. Is this an 1850? If it's an 1850, I've actually driven one of these. This is an auto. Yeah, it's a pre-HL this one, so it must have a really early one. That'd be a 72 only. Gosh. Wow. That's extraordinary. I've never seen such an early Dolomite before. So, uh, yeah, Mark II Spitfire here, 1965, Spitfire 4. Still got the sort of eccentric looking rear lights, um, but was sort of changed in later models. Herald platform though, of course, with V. So, you know, if you uh, if you want to change bits on there, you can just put some Herald bits on there. Let's have a look at some older Triumphs here. Pre 1940 Triumph motor car. 1931 Triumph Super 7 pickup. 1937 Vitesse 1460 Saloon. So. Yeah, the Vitesse and the Dolomite were old names brought back later by the company. For example, this Dolomite 1500 Sports Saloon from 1939. There's also another Dolomite here, another 1939. Look at this waterfall grill here. It's a beautiful car. So this is the sort of thing that Triumph was sort of known for. Dicky seat in the back as well. Um, not the most comfortable. I don't think there's not enough room really there for anybody's feet. That would be interesting. Triumph Roadsters here. Triumph Roadster Club, yes. I don't know how you tell what's an 1800 or a 2000. I have absolutely no idea, but got more dicky seats in there. Those look a bit more spacious than the other dicky seats. I'm getting those Bergerac vibes, viewers. Probably the most famous Triumph Roadster owner ever. Um, even though he's not a real person. Yeah, it's very good. Okay, let's have a look at some... Uh, let's have a look at some minis. Very, very late minis, in fact. Um, extraordinarily late minis. 2001 51 plate. Very late registration, because the production actually finished about a year 
before this was actually registered. Not sure what the exactly that one is. Uh, yeah, 2001 plate. By this stage, oh yeah, 286 out of 500. Um, <laughs> the R50 minis were in production and uh, well, 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 here we go. We've got some R50 and R53 minis here. Mini Cooper S built in August 2002. Not as old as some of his friends will be O2S. O2S, so early R50, R53, um, Mini Cooper S's. I forget exactly what the model codes are. I know the early ones are the R50s. And here is the wide register. Mr. Richardson from the Furious Driving Channel let me drive his 2001 R50 Mini Cooper back in 2020. And he's still got it. It's not this one. This is actually a press car. Um, OBL, straight away, you can know it's a press car. None of the cars that were on 51 plates... Sorry. None of the cars on Y plates were sort of customer cars that people had ordered they were either dealer demos um, like this one um, or they were press cars like this one the uh, customer cars started on a 51 plate right, let's take a look at uh, some rovers whilst we're here viewers which we do like mm. very nice 800 here It's a uh, 820i fastback with the M series engine, so it's one up from the base. The base was the 820e, which was on a carburetor on the old O series engine. The electronic can a choke on that apparently was uh, not very good. So an early R17 800 here, again an 820i, this time a saloon. No base level interior, unfortunately. Um, but a nice and less a very early R17 820 registered in 1991 yeah. take a look whilst we're here as well at uh, some Rover SD1s why not got a Vitesse here uh, doesn't tell me exactly what year this is but we can guess 83, 84 um, computer vision, so a competition car here with uh, American spec headlamps. A bit later, 8485. Again, with a V8 engine. And uh, this looks like another V8 one, but I could be wrong. We'll just take a look back. Right, yeah, it's a Vitesse. I don't know what anyway, year that is, I'm afraid. So, um, if we can get through here, we can take a look at this this one here of a Vitesse. We've got a lot of um, very tasty treats on here, haven't we? Here we go. That one's a number of the tests, 82, 83, and it appears in the calendar. That's on Tower Bridge. Wow, very nice. Right, let's uh, get out of here. Sporting Bear in a Lagonda here. Ooh. 1936 Lagonda LG2345 Le Mans Special. Nineteen. 1968-69 Jaguar 240. I should think they were discontinued actually in 68. So very late Mark II variant indeed. And 240 would be a baseball. Morris 6. Is this a, is this a Morris 6 or is this an Isis? Don't know, viewers. So don't know exactly what to year that is, I'm afraid. Rover 110, I do know approximately what year 
this would be between 62 and 64. Can't tell you any more than that because we haven't got a suffix plate on them, and you know, not all of them did. Very nice colour, though. Oh, the long, buckley vintage and classic vehicle meat. Yes, yeah, so uh, I think we've come across this stand before in previous years, haven't we, years? What is this extraordinary thing? Um, it's Alvis. Is that a front wheel drive Alvis, years? So this one, a 1990 Haldane, which is a sort of replica of the Healy 100. So that's why it's on a key plate. Uh, another very nice Jaguar XJS. Uh, 1994. Mm, factory five speed manual, that's very rare. And of course, a beige leather interior with wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. Mini Moke stand. Excellent. So, the first one they were built in Britain, then Australia, and then Portugal. Um, the current ones, I can't even remember what they're built actually. You can buy a new Moke. This one is an 87. Excellent. Uh, ordered by Austin Rover Overseas as a development car for a 1989 year refresh. So, we registered uh, in about 89. Wow, that's a, that's a fascinating thing, isn't it? It's really, really interesting. Yes, the prisoner. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. We've covered the cars using the prisoner on the channel in the video I made in about 2020 years. I-65 um, Austin Moke here. That's what the earlier ones look like. That um, gear lever's of a later car, but there we go. Wow, it's a very utilitarian thing, isn't it? Very utilitarian indeed. Uh, this would be another probably Portuguese one, which not crash into the into that television there. It's a right-hand drive, so yeah, another Portuguese one, registered in 1990. So it's both on the front, rather than like you know just said mini on the front, minis by this stage. And the twin engine mini. What year was this, this twin engine mini? Uh, 65. Following the success of the BMC twin engine mini mode designed by Alec Isagonis and continued further motorsport success, the idea of a twin engine competition mini was taken a step further in 1963 by BMC's experimental department. Interesting. We've got here this uh, Cooper register. I'm sure there's lots in there. 464 JOP. It's kind of similar to the uh, registration of the Mini Cooper that's used in Danger Man. I think that's 931 HOP. Interesting. 964 Austin Mini Cooper S. That looks very familiar registration number. The competition department was in Abingdon, which is in uh, Berkshire at the time, so RX Berkshire. Makes sense. 1998 1999 Mini Cooper. 1987 Mini Mayfair. So, yeah, the last year that they actually have the Austin badge on them. I have driven a Mini Mayfair on channel on Three Jacket Reviews back in 2020. It was, a, it was an auto, sorry, a manual. This is an auto. And uh, that interior looks rather nice. Mini Z car. From his 1340 A series engine, didn't it? What have we got here? Interesting. It's a uh, Mini Balmoral edition. Japanese domestic market. 1995. It looks like. Um, one of the very late Mark 6s. Interesting. Maybe we have a support vehicle, a mini van. So on a T plate, uh, 78, 79. But of course, as I always say, that should actually have a pressed steel grill on the chrome one. It's still got the exposed 
door hinges, still, still got the sliding windows, still got the house style door handles. And we had those right up until the end in 82. Audi owners club stand here. I've actually just driven one of these on the channel. This is an, a B2 facelift Audi 80 Sport. See if we've got any bolster wear on there. Ooh, no, this is, that's actually not too bad. Yeah, I drove one of these. I to a chap called Ben. I uh, drove it uh, sort of last month. Yeah, Audi 80 Sport facelift one. That's a, a, a personal plate, but that tells me the car is registered in 84 or 85. So yeah, facelifted one. Actually got a preface lift one here as well. And it's a quattro. Look at that. That's pretty special, isn't it, viewers? It's got a very nice interior in it too. Be careful you don't Yeah, it's got a slightly earlier interior in that one. And electric windows as well. You don't get electric windows in the sport. Ooh, a B3 here. Excellent viewers. Is this an Audi 90? Hello, by the way, to uh, JR Seaton on Instagram. Yes, it's an Audi 90 Quattro. <sighs> Viewers, that is delicious. As is this uh, Audi S8 from 2001 or 2002. Complete, of course, with beige leather interior and wood. I do like a nice beige leather interior. Sort of full, almost like road inspector. Huh? Let's have a look at some of these... Uh, Rally golfs over here. Never officially imported over here, I don't think. You had to get it from somewhere else. This is the uh, rally front end for the rally golfs. We'll take a look at the back of this. There's some space. Spoke interior on that one and some interesting door handles. There we go. That's what the uh, for the back rally golf, as it says on here. And there's another one there. Excellent. This is uh, just a sort of very much sort of retrim Mark II interior. Nineteen seventy eight seventy nine Volkswagen Golf Mark One. It's Mark One Owners Club here. Oh, these have been lowered, haven't they? I don't know what engine that is. 79. Oh, I don't know what that is. That one looks a bit more standard, but I might be wrong. 79. Uh, five door. That one's a Golf N. I don't know what that means. Um, this one here is a 1.5, but it's been rebuilt. Be on air ride or hydraulic or something. Oh, it's automatic as well. Right, no, not snagged on them on there. So it's a pre facelift one. This is a facelift one. This is a Mark 1 GTI. It's not the campaign. It's an 83, so it's a pretty late one. I think they finished an 84 of these. Unless you've got a City Golf, which went until 2009. Um, this is a Clipper. No, it's Sportline, uh, 91 Sportline. The Mark 1 Cabrio was actually never replaced by any Mark 2 variant. It was only replaced with the Mark 3 Cabrio, I think in 1992. Or it would have been 1993, actually. But yeah, that's uh, pretty special. So we've got, uh, what have we got here? The, uh, can't read that. Medway Monkeys, there we go, yeah, I can't read that, it's really backwards, okay. Toyota Celica Supra, this one. The year is this, it's an 84. 2.8 straight, straight 6 and 5 speed manual, very nice. 1976, MGB GT V8. Restoration took two years to complete. On the course, the road bumper road stage. 1991 Honda Civic. D2. Oh, right, it's only got a 1.4 D series engine in it. And then, of course, we've got a that's a Z car here. 
it's a oh it's a 260Z oh my gosh I've driven one of these for I drove this at the Two Jacket Reads Christmas special last December amazing yeah they're a bit of a handful those and this is a uh, Mazda wow it's a Mazda Porter Cab from 1984 I have never seen one of those before the years fascinating 1963 Volkswagen 1200 Deluxe factory rag top imagine that'll be an American spec one we all know what this is inspired by don't we do I don't even want to spell it out do I really I think you all know that OFP 857 the most famous Volkswagen registration number in the entirety of history I think 1973 Beetle but it's been made to look a lot older than it is Safari bus 1.9 petrol 5 speed excellent petrol excellent we talked about it then right let's have to take a look then I think they call this a T25 but I might be wrong very typical of the era this kind of beige colour hmm got a safari roof I went on safari viewers actually we were in Kenya in uh, 2009 oh, that's an old one isn't it 1955 Swedish import oval window beetle interesting Volkswagen Type 3 from 1971. So we're kind of sort of half unrestored as well. That's uh, interesting. Mini kit stand. Um, presumably cars based on a kit from a Mini. Interesting. So, uh, this one, what's this one? Minus Maxi. 85 converted from a Mini Clubman Estate. Um, which is a 1978 very number plate. Interesting rear lights on those. What is this? Is this a... I don't know. I've seen one of these before, what is this? No idea. Do you have know what this is? This is an Ogle. I think they call it the SX1000, but it says SX1000 on it. And that's uh, it's for sale. Interesting. Ooh, and the S, of course, a Towns Hustler. Sport. Uh, yeah, looks very sporty. It's me. What is this? Height. Wow. That's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Um, it's a Mini Marcos. Yeah, it looks like it's a Mini Marcos, isn't it? It's a Mini Gem. I don't know, viewers. Uh, wrong person to answer questions like this. What's this? Mini Base Mark 7. I've never seen it. It's about 73, 74, something like that. Commentary Motorfest stand. Interesting. 1961 Jaguar Mark 2. It's very nice. Originally in New Zealand and now back over here. That's very special. So, what year? So what day is it? 3rd and 4th of June, okay, in commentary. Next year, excellent. Triumph TR8, that's a Solihull one, like what I learned yesterday. Um, it's also got the uh, different boot lock. Yeah, it's a TR8 V8 version of the TR7. This is from 1981, so it's a very, very late one. Won't have been built in Canley though, because Canley was closed by 1981, but it won't couple over small points. Jackie and Mark. One, three point four liters. Exciting. And then, of course, you've got a Toyota three hundred nine GTI that was built at Wrighton on Dunsmore. Excellent. Yeah, these are pretty rare now, aren't they? Nineteen ninety. Second keep owner kept it till twenty twenty two. Nineteen fifty nine Jaguar Mark One three point four just before the Mark II came out and of course another one of these 
top at Sunbeam Lotus. 79, so quite an early one. On, yes, Coventry Plate, of course. Mm, Hillman Avenger Tigers views. <laughs> There's three of them. Excellent. 73, 74 registration on this one. Can't remember how you tell the pre and post face if one's apart. Here's another one. It's on a personal plate. They are actually yellow viewers. They look orange um, on video, but they are actually yellow. Information sheet on this one, that's very handy. Uh, that is a 72. Ooh, it's a very early one. Excellent. And then there's another one here. Um, yeah, another early one. So, yeah, be a. 72 only, there we go. Supplied in Bristol. Brilliant. From now on, have very little mileage. Never restored and no welding. Wonderful. A couple more of these uh, subway notices here. I do like these years. Never get tired of seeing these. Dumb Freezeman show. Gosh, this has come a long way, hasn't it? I if that came down on a trailer from um, Scotland or something. Or doubly so, uh, 80 to 81. That from Stags viewers. 1973, or I've registered 74. Mark II Stag Automatic. Uh, BMW Astral Blue, originally Magenta. Ooh, but someone's retrimmed it for. Beige leather interior, and a manual overdrive there. I can never tell the difference between a Mark one and a Mark II Stag, I'm afraid, dude. I don't actually know what the difference is. If somebody knows what the difference is, please um, tell me in the comment section below because I, I can't remember. It's automatic, so it be a Mark, Mark one, I should think. Yeah, 72. Mark and automatic, all the dish white. It's supposed to be a Mark II, this later one. Seventy-five Mark II Auto ZF four-speed gearbox in chestnut. This colour's called. Brilliant. They are very pretty cars, aren't they? Very high survival rate actually for a car like this. You see them at shows a lot because they're just a lot left. Uh, to say 2.5 pi or just 2,000 views. We'll take a look on the back. It will say, won't it? No, it says stag. It's neither. Ooh, so I want to put a uh, stag V8 engine in this. Of course, you can do that. That's easy enough to do, I think. Uh, dog the spit. How about spit the dog? Ooh, we put a. 2.5 litre six cylinder engine to this. Interesting. A hybrid GT6 and Dolomite gearbox. And then we've got uh, Herald here, 1964. I imagine it's a Herald um, 1200 because I think that the 948 ones were gone by then. No, it's a 1250 actually. Even better. Cousin TR6. Does that mean it's got a Cosworth engine that views? Well, it certainly has. Yes. Previous keeper acquired in 1977. It's a bit before that, though, isn't it? The, the production was ended by then. Like, oh, I can't see a plate on that, so I don't know. Ooh, that's a very nice Herald 1360 views. And it's got the uh, sort of Moonlight style wheels, the one that I drove had. Uh, when I drove last month, actually. Is that blaze red? Right. I think that's quite enough viewers for this part. We've got either one or two more parts. I've got to film some American cars, and then I must go and finish off filming at the auction. So please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we will see you very soon for what might be the final part of this. I am an absolute sucker for this, aren't I?
Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below.